It is spring 2023 and I thought it would be quite a good opportunity to give you a quick update as to what's been happening in the garden and just show you the stunning azalea is in bloom for a very short period of time. By next week all of those flowers will be gone so I think today we will cover a bit of a garden tour, what's been happening, a bit of an update on the grass. You can just chill out, get a coffee, we'll make a nice long one about the garden today. Chicken is loving the bifolds, by the way. So I figured it'd be a good time for a little bit of a break from the utility room and downstairs loo project, which obviously for us is now all finished, but you're still working your way through the videos. But I'm filming this in May 2023. It'll probably be June by the time I actually get it edited and out for you guys to see. But in many ways, this is our favorite time of year in the garden. You know, the hawthorn is in full bloom. The bluebells are out doing their thing. And of course, if you've been following the channel on Instagram and on Twitter, you'll know all about the Azalea Countdown. It always kicks into life at kind of beginning of May. Absolutely stunning plant. And sadly, the flowers only last for a couple of weeks and it's already starting to drop its flowers. So this time next week, those flowers will be gone and it'll all be just green foliage on it. But you know, at the time that we first bought this house and obviously we were presented with just a wilderness of a back garden, this was just hidden away in a pile of sticks and brambles and dead bushes and things. And we didn't even know what it was and we left it alone. It's always a good idea, especially with big mature plants before you cut them down just leave it for six months to a year, work out what they are, because honestly, money can't buy a plant like that. Absolutely stunning azalea. We think it's a flame azalea. It doesn't really come across on film very well. It's not pink, it's fluorescent red. Even on a gloomy day, the whole garden lights up around that plant. It's just such a gorgeous color. But as I say, it's been in bloom for a week or something and you can see it's already started dropping its flowers. We've got about another week of bloom left and all of that will be gone. But yeah, really special time, certainly a time worth showing you. And as I say, that just happens to coincide with when the hawthorn's in full bloom as well. And again, that could have easily ended up going a journey and it's such a, a beautiful tree. We're possibly gonna have to like prune it a little bit because it is quite close to the house. We'll see how big it gets. I'm not sure how big hawthorn trees get, probably quite big, but at the moment it's not a problem. So we'll cross that bridge. But as I say, today's video, it's gonna be very chilled garden stuff. I'll talk a little bit about the lawn later on because we had some problems towards the beginning of the year, but all of that's been fixed now. And we've also added a whole load more plants, taking out a bit of the corner of the garden down there. There's still more grass to take out just to kind of stop the garden looking so long and thin. Still early days for this garden. As I say, it started life, absolute overgrown wilderness, and it was full of bindweed and brambles and basically it was just out of control. It all needed stripped back to get all the weeds and everything like that out back to a blank canvas. This time last year we didn't even have a lawn up this top end where I'm standing at the moment. We did manage to get a few things planted last year such as these wild cherry plants at the back. Look how big they are already. Again that just kind of disguises this studio room wall a little bit. Chicken's having a bit of a dust bath, You're loving that. What have we got down here? Let me just show you, because um, I can never remember the names of these. These are the ones that were planted last year. Uh, this is, I think this is a daisy plant. Yeah, daisy bush, what's the official name? Don't know if you can see that. Olaria something. Uh, this one at the back, I appreciate that's a bit close to the daisy plant, but when these were first planted, they were tiny. Um, we might end up having to move things around a little bit. Viburnum tinus hedging. What's the easy name? Oh, Eve Price. So that's Eve Price. We've got a few Eve Prices around. Cat's favourite bush here. They love just chilling out underneath it. Um, and again, I've completely forgotten the name of it. 
think we've got one over here. I think it's the same as this, which is, no, that's apple blossom. I don't think it's apple blossom. Maybe it's this one, Yankee Point, which is, I can't, it's too far away for us to read it. Keonothis, maybe. Anyway, yeah, so if you're new to the channel, year one was the big strip out of everything. Year two, we started to kind of vaguely get a bit of a, a shape of what we wanted the garden to look like, what was going to go where. We got some plants in and now we're into year three. This is our third spring in the house and we're starting to get still more structural plants put in, starting to now remove some of the grass. A lot of the grass was put in just to kind of, so we wouldn't just walking around in mud basically. But anyway, I'll talk all about that later. Enough chatting, let's chill out with a bit gardening and then I'll come back and tell you about the lawn. Honestly, it only seems like five minutes ago that we were planting all this. <laughs> now it's time to remove all the grass. Not quite all of it, but a good bit of it. And somewhere buried in here is a pyracantha. That I'm hoping I can liberate. Let's see. It was never the best of spots for one, because mowing around it was just impossible it was a bit daft really but so the plan is to save the pyracantha plant it elsewhere but this is going to be our new compost heap location oh. nice and central to the garden so we don't have to like walk too far and it's going to shield the shed a little bit We're going to plant some big plants up this side, so you don't really see it. Um, it's not in anyone's road, and uh, as I say, we've got a lot of turf to remove, <laughs> a huge amount of turf to remove. All of this round here, I don't know if you can see it at the minute, but all the way up that end, we've got a whole load more plants to plant. 
Hopefully, I can save that. So I've already made a video about lifting turf. It is backbreaking work, but uh, you've just got to kind of chip away. And if you have a look at my video that I made a while back about the best way of doing it, this is still the best way I've found of doing it, is to kind of edge it all off and then use a fork to gradually lift it up. The alternative is hiring obviously a turf cutter, but for an area like this, it's not really practical. So yeah, we've just got to kind of crack on with it but don't underestimate one little strip of turf is one wheelbarrow so if you can imagine how many strips are out to take out of here probably 50 I would guess 50 wheelbarrows and these are heavy fortunately we've got a bit of a dip down the bottom of the garden that we can use to fill that otherwise uh, disposing of this isn't the easiest task in the world Almost missed one. Can't remember what this is. The garden centre very kindly gave us it for free because it was a bit of a reject and we just bought like a hundred quid's worth of plants, so uh, it's one of them. But anyway, figured we'll shove it here where we used to have tulips, but the squirrels ate them all, so. Got two chances. It's always a bit tricky this edge because you end up hitting stuff with a lawn mower and it's really it's not the best edge for delicate little plants, but as I say, it was free. So I think it's just about to start tipping it down. So I'm gonna to have to film this really quickly, but I'll show you very quickly what we've done. So around this side, we've moved the azalea. I don't know what sort of azalea it is, but it's a one with pink flowers. And we had it over the other side. We've moved that over here, we've got lavender. We've got our toilet brush plant. I think we've put a little fuchsia down at the bottom there. There's another lavender at the back. Uh, mint behind that just to fill up that space. Oh, I'm out of breath. We've got uh, some alliums at the back there. They'll hopefully grow up nice and tall. We do need to like fill in this void at the front here, but um, like bedding plants and lavenders and stuff like that can go there later down the line. I've got loads of lavender cuttings that are going to be ready to plant out soon. 
We've got our flame mazalia, which has just started coming into flower. Honestly, it's the most stunning plant in the garden that, and we've built the little kind of, uh, it's just to protect the bottom really, so we don't keep hitting it with the lawnmower, but generally that would end up growing up all full of weeds and things at the bottom. So we've created a little brick circle around that. Then over on this side, coming away from the house, we've got a rose, we've got uh, clematis, uh, carnations, we've got the lilac, which is just starting to flower. Um, it's because we cut it back so heavily, I think that's probably going to be it for flowers for this year. Um, oh, we'll see. Might get a few more. Um, we've got like a jasmine climber thing at the back, lavender, another clematis, clematis, uh, fuchsia kind of a cypress conifer thing there just to fill in that expansive nothingness there. Uh, cordyline, again, I quite like cordylines. They, they fill up the space quite nicely and you can always put a few uh, bedding plants around the bottom. Can't remember what he is, uh, can't remember what he is. We've got another kind of azalea thing here that seems really happy. So we've nibbled away a little bit more of the turf around here. We've then got buddleia over here, which we figured the buddleia all kind of grow up quite tall butterfly plant I think it's the one with white flowers on that we've got the dog rose here and put some uh, trellis up over here just to kind of encourage it to climb towards the fence and we've got the um, maple uh, sycamore that we're you can't really call it coppicing but we'll cut it right down to the base and it's already growing like crazy but we're just going to kind of keep on top of that because we're going to treat it kind of as a bush um, and let it just uh, fill out that area a little bit. Again, clematis, clematis. Um, well, I think we've talked about these plants before, so I'm not going to those. We have then got over here, rose, fuchsia, clematis, clematis, laurel. Uh, we've talked about all of those. Little acer at the front here. Uh, I've forgotten the name of that one, I'll pop it on the screen. Allium, Alliums at the back, another climber at the back there. Again, I've forgotten the name of it. It's not a clematis, but it is a climber. Um, we've got our cherry tree here. That's now not gonna be in danger of getting hit by the mower all the time now that we've removed all this soil. Again, big expansive soil, I know. But once all this grows up, it's gonna need the space. And in the meantime, we can plant a few bedding plants and things around there. But we wanted to get more structural planting in. And then over here, we've got what will be the compost heap area. Transplanted two privets, uh, nice big mature privets on the left, and we've transplanted, well, basically dug up, removed all the grass around them and stuff, and then replanted the uh, pyracantha to the right here. So we're gonna need something kind of here-ish at some point just to fill that area in. But other than that, laurel, 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 azalea, and as I say, this front area will be uh, the compost heap area. So we're gonna build some kind of structural stuff around there, so ignore that patch of soil. So basically that bit of grass will be like the access way into the compost heap area. And we'll do it in such a way that you can't even see them, essentially. The big problem we've got still is uh, vine weed. It's growing everywhere. And, and you know what it is, the roots go down really deep and you can try your best to get the roots out, but the, the roots just break off and uh, they grow back. You just have to keep on top of it, but obviously it's a garden that was largely untouched for, what, 50 odd years. But yeah, I know it looks like a whole lot of soil, but we have removed a ton of grass. We've removed so much turf and it just stops the garden looking quite so long and skinny. And we've got much more room now. Once these plants mature, Hopefully, you know, we've got the bigger stuff at the back there, yews, conifers, laurels, alliums, and all that. And then we've got uh, slightly more medium-sized plants, like your roses, acer, and things like that. Um, and then, as I say, we'll put some bedding plants towards the front. And then over on this side, in front of the studio, nothing's really changed around here. We've run out of time and we are absolutely wrecked, but we are gonna remove some of the grass around here, again, because this poor tree 
which is a plum tree here. Uh, it's difficult to see because it's kind of camouflaged, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that plum tree there, whenever I'm mowing the grass, I hit it. It's a nightmare to mow around. So what we're gonna do is nibble this corner out here, create a bit of a bed there. We've got loads of nice plants there, um, blueberries, uh, cotton Easter, yew, all sorts of stuff, raspberries, loads of raspberries around here, which we're just gonna kind of leave to do their thing. Unfortunately, we'll rarely get to actually eat the raspberries because the uh, birds generally get them first, but such is life. Again, Franchette's cotton Easter over here. Um, a lot of invasive plants around here that we need to sort out, but again, that's a job for another day. The main thing is, is that what we can start doing is getting the compost heaps moved. Because once the compost heaps have moved from there, we can move some of this rubbish along to the left here. We can then move these little sheds over to this side and then tidy all this area up because as I say, it's a complete tip, but a lot of this wood's gonna be used for building a compost heap. And then the plan is to have the greenhouse coming out from there. So yeah, lots to do, but we're getting there. As I say, here comes the rain, which is perfect timing really, because we've just planted about 30 odd plants and they're gonna love it. So you wouldn't believe it, but about a month ago, this grass was looking pretty poor. Now, bear in mind that we'd just planted it up last year. You can see the video about what we had to go through because the ground was just root city. There was a great big birch tree over there and the roots were coming right across the garden. Massive, great big, some of them four or five inches in diameter. 
So we had to dig all of that out and rotivate the whole lot and plant it from scratch. And it was looking really good last year, but after the winter, it was looking a bit sorry for itself. It was looking very sparse and I was getting a little bit concerned because of course last year we had that very, very hot summer. We didn't have hose pipe bands or anything daft like that up in the northeast of England. I'm not going to jump to the defence of water ports in the UK, but Northumbrian water genuinely are generally pretty good. Of course we've got Kielder Reservoir just up the road from here. One of the biggest man-made reservoirs in Europe, I think, so we don't get water shortages up here but it still did get very warm and the grass did get scorched a little bit and I wasn't sure if that's what caused it to just die off a little bit too much over the winter. So I put a spring fertilizer down and left it a few weeks, watered it in and all that sort of thing. Honestly, it made no difference whatsoever. You know what made all the difference? We put some top dressing down. Well, not proper top dressing, we just put compost down, just common our garden bags of compost that we happened to buy from Wix, I think it was. We tried both an organic compost and a bog standard Westland compost, and both had pretty much exactly the same effects. The only problem was the organic one had bits of glass in, so I'm not gonna use that again because if the lawnmower hits a bits of glass and it flies off and hits a window or something like that, we've got a bit of a problem. But honestly, within a matter of days of just putting a very thin layer of compost over the whole lawn just making sure that the grass obviously shows through if you put it on too thick it'll kill the grass because no light will get through but just a really thin layer i can't remember we used about 10 or 15 bags of compost just on this new area at the front here and within two or three days the lawn was just fixed instantly Oh, and we did put a bit extra seed down as well. So we kind of mixed that in with the compost, did a bit of seed, a bit of compost over the top, raked it all in. I put pictures on, I think Twitter, probably on Instagram as well. So make sure you're following us on those two because I do put some extra stuff on those two platforms. But yeah, within, certainly within a week, the lawn was good as new and it's great now. We haven't had any rain for a few weeks, so it's not as green as it was a couple of weeks ago but it's just great nice and thick and perfectly usable so i'm really happy with that anyway folks i hope you enjoyed that just a bit of a spring update on the garden i'll update you again in probably six months time or thereabouts there are plenty more garden projects coming up as i say compost heaps and all that sort of stuff so don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see all of that don't forget to follow on instagram gosforth handyman on instagram gosforth andy on twitter as i say it's time to say goodbye to the azalea for another year back to the normal schedule next week because i don't want this channel just turning into a gardening channel although i am vaguely thinking of setting up a second channel just for the gardening side of things i don't know what do you reckon because there's loads of stuff that i'd like to show you but if I turn this into too much gardeny stuff, most people follow this channel more for the property maintenance side of things because that is what this channel is all about. If you would like to see more stuff about the garden, do post it down in the comments below. I might even just keep it for a member zone thing. If you're not aware, loads of extra stuff over on the member zone, members.gosforthhandyman.com. But if you do think it warrants another channel, I don't know, it's a lot of work and I've already got technically four channels. Anyway, folks, I think we'll leave it there for today. As per usual, be nice to one another, look after each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.